we're going to take a look at the top 10 comic book sales on eBay for the month of February. Nothing too ridiculous. Maybe something a little fishy. Some good deals. Some not so great deals. Let's talk about it and where it fits in the market up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Finally, I figured out the 3,500 subscriber giveaway. We're going to be giving away this copy of Flash Rebirth, number one, in reintroduction of Barry Allen to DC Comics, Star Secret Wars Battle World, number one, and Invincible Iron Man 170 newsstand. First time that Rhodey puts on the um, Iron Man armor. Uh, these are going to be the giveaway. The way to enter the giveaway, the 3,500 subscriber giveaway, is we're going to do the drawing on Tuesday the 7th, March 7th, at 10 p.m. Eastern. And in order to be eligible, you have to be a subscriber to the channel. You have to have liked the video and left a comment. What I'm going to do is of all the videos that I recorded and uh, dropped during the month of February. I'm going to pick the one with the fewest comments at the time of the drawing. And that's going to be the one we're going to randomly select one winner. And you're going to get all three of these books. I will ship internationally. So um, if you're interested, subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Leave a comment on any of my videos from February. And the one that has the fewest comments... When we do the drawing on March 7th is going to be the one that we'll select a winner from. Good luck. Hey there, comic community. Welcome back to another video from Bronzeville Comics. Uh, please look for us on the other socials. Instagram, Bronzeville, Bronzeville underscore comics. Same thing on whatnot. Bronzeville underscore comics. We do sales on whatnot every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern time. And there is a link in the description. If you use the code there, you'll get $10 off your, off your first purchase regardless of who it is with. Uh, there's also a link to my email and my eBay store and a link to King Con 4 just a few weeks away. Uh, Two-day show now, March 25th and 26th in Island, New Jersey. Um, one of the biggest comic-only shows in the Northeast. Uh, it's become just in a, a, a year and a half um, something that's uh, become quite a sensation. It's for the community, by the community. Or is it by the community, for the community? Anyway, you'll see a lot of uh, Instagram and YouTube um, content creators there that'll be selling. They'll be very Gary. They'll be Streetside Anthony, um, Erod, 212 and the New York Warriors, 360 Comics, uh, Goodbye Comics will be there, uh, as, as well as a whole bunch of others uh, that uh, I, I will forget to name. Uh, three Men in a Basement, Pressable Defects. So check out all the vendors are listed in the uh, on the website. So what I wanted to do is take a look at the top 10 uh, eBay sales of comic books for the month of February. And the month of February was reasonably, reasonably robust um, because when you search through sold listings, you'll see the last three months. So February was mixed in there fairly well. I didn't have to go too far down. Uh, let's look at number... Uh, 10 on the list, and this is a, I, I think, a great, um, fantastic deal for the seller. Uh, it is kind of a unique copy. Incredible Hulk 340 in the CGC 9.8 wide pages. A newsstand Mark Jewelers insert. This, of course, is that classic Todd McFarlane cover with uh, Wolverine and the Hulk in the Reflection of his claws. This book sold for $14,999. That is a healthy sale. Now, it's difficult because there aren't really comps for this book. Uh, there are newsstands. The most recent sale of a 9.8 newsstand was in July for $3,901. So we're talking um, like more than three and a half times that much. Um, what I found interesting, even though the seller had 100% um, positive rating. They only had 349 items of feedback as a seller. So um, 
I think they, they listed it as a buy it now, and somebody went and scooped it up for $15,000. Um, again, a hard comp. It's a, 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 a later newsstand book, but not ridiculously late, and probably fairly late in the Mark Jewelers um, in the Mark Jewelers run of things. But a 9.8 Mark Jewelers. Now, all Mark Jewelers have to be newsstands. And there are no Mark Jewelers that went to the direct market, at least as far as I know. If you have uh, um, information to the contrary, just leave me a comment. Um, but that's what I believe. They were all newsstands. So it doesn't really pay to look for Mark Jewelers inserts in direct editions. Um, I don't exactly know what this book should be worth. Uh, if a... Newsstand 9.8 is about $4,000. Is a Mark Jeweler that much more? Uh, I guess maybe for its simple rarity, perhaps. Um, but I would think maybe, me, I mean, maybe 50% more. But not, you know, not 250% more. So, anyway, that's number 10. Number 9 on the list is Spawn 185, the 1 in 10 Will Sportazio sketch cover variant in a CGC 9.0 signature series signed by Todd McFarlane that sold for $15,000. Now, I'm not a big Spawn expert. Evidently, this is a fairly rare variant cover. Uh, this was when Spawn was not having huge print runs. Uh, and it is a variant, a 8.5 Sold in 2018 for $8,859. So this is not quite double that. Uh, it's a 9.0. Could you imagine what a 9.8 would go for? Um, not many of these on the census in signed or unsigned condition. But man, uh, 15 grand for a signed uh, Spawn 185. 9.0, not even a 9.8. Uh, that is pretty remarkable. Um and again, if you're a Spawn collector, is this particular book and this particular sketch variant, and it's a Protasio variant, it's not even a McFarland cover, um, is that something that people really seek out? Next on the list is one of those curious ones. And it is it is a grail. It's Avengers 4, the first Silver Age appearance of Captain America in a CGC 9.0 that sold for $15,000. Plus $100 shipping. Twice. It sold at the beginning of February and the end of February. Same seller. So I'm assuming that the uh, first sale potentially was canceled. And he relisted the item and it sold again. But what makes this a really suspicious sale is 9.0. Um, the fair market value according to Go Collect is $9,250. And this sold for $15,000. More than 50% above uh, what the fair market value is. And it's even above the fair market value of a 9.2. This is a 9.0. Um, I'm just a little bit confused by that. Um, I, I don't... And the, the fact that the, it's sold twice identically mm, um, is, is a little bit head-scratching. I'm not sure if it was a... Um, I think it was a buy it now. Maybe best offer was accepted for something less than fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Ten thousand, I could maybe see. Still a little healthy for my blood. Um, you know, FMV is ninety two fifty, so ten thousand would not be out of the realm of possibility. But uh, that it, that that listing that sale, something doesn't really sit right with me. Um, anyway, uh, let's move on to number seven on the list, and this is a lot, an interesting lot. It listed it as Incredible Hulk 180, 181, and 182. No matter how you slice it, the first appearance of Wolverine, maybe the second, maybe the first in Cameo and the first, whatever. The first three appearances in any form of Wolverine, all in graded CGC in a 9.0, 9.4, 9.4. It had a buy it now price of $18,500. If you take the fair market values of those books in that grade, a 180 and a 9.0 has an FMV of 2,400. A 181 and a 9.4 is really what drives this sale. That has an FMV of 13,500. And a 182 and a 9.4 has an FMV of 650. You add that all together, it's 16,550. This is was listed for 18,500, but it actually sold uh, best offer for $16,000, which seems like a fair offer. Uh, 
you know, bundling it together and saving $550. Mm, um, not bad. I mean, these are high grade books and you're really buying it for the 181. But if you're uh, a Wolverine collector, you probably want all three. Um, ideally, you'd want them to be linear. Now, what is interesting here is that all of them were that those older style slabs, kind of the Mach 2 slabs, um, the ones where the page quality is not a below the grade number, but it's in the middle of the, the label. So potentially maybe somebody thought there was room for improvement. Bit of a gamble when you're trying to improve a 9.4 of a $13,000 book. Um, but... The 181 and the 182, not both 9.4s. You got linearity there, and you could probably trade up uh, without too much cash outlay to go from a 9.0 to a 9.4 and the 180, and then you'd have all 9.4s, and that would be, if you're a collector, that would be great, I suppose. Um, number six on the list. X-Men number one, first appearance of the X-Men, Professor Xavier, uh, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Angel Beast, Iceman, Magneto, in a CGC 5.5. That sold at auction for seventeen thousand um, dollars. There were fifty-nine bids. Now, this price of seventeen thousand dollars is in line with the last four sales in this grade uh, that have all taken place since November. So, over the last several months, this book has kind of, I would say, stabilized in price at right around that seventeen thousand dollar price point. Um, and if you look at the trend, and I'm going to put it up here, this is the trend of the, the this book in the five point five. You can see it's kind of leveled off and maybe ticking up just a little bit. Um, but if you eliminate the comic boom, it's kind of right in there in line with what, uh, where the trajectory of the prices were going prior to the boom. Um, so I think that's a, a sale that's right on target, to be honest with you. Let's talk about number five on the list. This one was interesting. Um... This is Amazing Spider-Man number one in a CGC 4.5 that had a very robust sale of $18,500. Now, this is interesting. It was a fixed price um, that sold, again, for $18,500. All of the sales, and you can see when we take a look, this one sale is an uptick. Um, all the other sales in a 4.5, the last six sales... We're all between $12,000 and $14,000, and this is more than $4,500 in excess of that. What really is curious is I put the certification number in the CGC certification database, no greater notes. It's a 4.5 with no greater notes. I thought maybe it was something that someone thought could improve with a clean and a press, and it is a, a pretty nice looking 4.5, I'll be honest with you, um, but... There's no greater notes for an Amazing Spider-Man 1 and a 4.5? You just leave that mystery there? That's curious to me. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. That's really um, unusual. I mean, if I, got, if I got an Amazing Spider-Man 1 back and I didn't have any graders notes and I thought it was better than what they graded it, I would be a little bit uh, put off by that, to say the least. Um, so, Yeah. Um, no greater notes on a on a on a 4.5 Grail, just very strange. Let's go to number four on the list. And number four on the list has similarity with a book we've just talked about uh, previously. This is New Mutants 98 CGC 9.8 Mark Jewelers insert, just like the Incredible Hulk. Um, it sold for eighteen thousand seven hundred forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. It was the best offer accepted for a listing of $24,999.99. So somebody did get uh, $62.50 off the asking price. Again, a hard book to get comps on. Um, the 9.4 sold in October of last year, Mark Jewelers, uh, for $2,100. So this is like almost nine times that. And I guess if you're really a big Deadpool collector and you want 9.8s of, you know, the, the the Direct, the Newsstand, and the Mark Jewelers, there aren't a lot of choices out there. So I think this is one of the the, um, the things, and, and this is true of that Spawn sketch cover, that Hulk 9.8 Mark Jewelers, it's just 
um, you know, when you're talking about supply and demand, there's a very small supply. So if you're one of the few people that wants that book, I guess you may pay a, a bit of a premium for it. Again, this is late in the game for Mark Jewelers, and um, again, a very robust sale. So I think kind of the moral of the story is here. It seems that if people, you know, ha uh, there's something that they really want, uh, they're um, they're bidding for it. Number three on the list is a, another lot. This is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic mirage lot of 180, or I'm sorry, 108 CGC graded books. Um, does all, the issue number one was a sixth printing, but it was a signature series. This entire lot sold for eighteen thousand five hundred. You add on the three hundred dollars shipping, which bumps it ahead of the New Mutants ninety eight by a cent, right? No, by fifty dollars and a cent. Um, so yeah, this is just a very voluminous uh, TMNT collection. Uh, it would take a lot of. Um, legwork to figure out what the FMB is on this. I'm going to assume that I would be surprised if the um, values of all of the individual issues added together was was equal to or less than 18,500. Um, maybe this is this could be somebody that had curated their own personal collection and was looking to get rid of it you know, because they needed, you know, a nice chunk of money. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, it could be the buyer. It could be a dealer who sees the opportunity, if the price is right, to parse out these individual issues for a little bit uh, of a profit here. Um, I'm not sure. And again, a lot of these books were signature series, and FMV on those is uh, a little trickier to find. So if you know... Uh, I'm not a TMNT expert. If you have a little bit more uh, expertise, uh, leave a comment below. Number two on the list. This is the second appearance of this particular book. X-Men number one in a CGC 6.0 that sold at auction for $20,303 with 45 bids. Um, this is the lowest sale uh, of this book in a 6.0 since October of 2020. So even though it went up to auction, I'm not sure when the auction concluded, and that could have been a factor. But again, you're putting a twenty thousand dollar book up at auction. You need to have on eBay. You need to have people with eyes on it that can afford to click a button and spend twenty thousand um, dollars. The most recent sale in December was for twenty one thousand six hundred dollars. So it's about thirteen hundred dollars lower than that. Not an insane amount lower, but. Um, you know, this, the price on this book has leveled off just a little bit. Um, I think this is eh, a fair price. Uh, I think it's a the the buyer probably got a pretty good deal, but not a mega deal. Um, let's go to number one on the list, and finally, finally, some DC love, and it is some old DC love. This is Action Comics number thirteen in a CGC one point five that sold for forty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents in a buy it now. This is the first appearance of the Ultra Humanite. Um, the Go Collect has the FMV of this at forty-seven thousand dollars. They incorporate sales in other surrounding grades. The most recent sale of a one point five was twenty-six thousand five hundred nine dollars back in December of twenty seventeen, more than five years ago. Obviously pre-boom. Um, so fifty thousand for Action Thirteen in a one point five. That could be um, could be a fair price. I, I don't think that is. Um, I think that's within the realm of uh, normalcy of what a buyer uh, would expect to have to pay for the book and what a seller would uh, within the 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 range of what a seller would expect uh, to sell that book for. Uh, this is the first appearance of the Ultra Humanite. Uh, the Ultra Humanite was a mad scientist uh, who predated Lex Luthor. And eventually, the Ultra Humanite story changed. Roy Thomas did a lot of work with Ultra Humanite in the 80s and All-Star Squadron and Infinity Inc. to change it into um, uh, a character that's, that's still used, um, and actually a character we saw in the Stargirl TV series. Uh, Ultra Humanite um, had his brain transplanted first into an actress <laughs> at the time, and then later into an albino gorilla. So, um, you know, it just... 
kind of it ended up kind of a ridiculous character, but it is Ultra Humanite's also always been a fairly intriguing um, foil. And uh, even though he started as a Superman, and I think he's kind of almost like a prototype of Lex Luthor. Um, and he's very similar to the character from the the Mad Scientist character from the uh, Fleischer cartoon of the 1940s. Um, it has it has a character that's stayed around for over 80 years. So um, that is the list. Let me know uh, what you think of the books on this list. Which of these make you go, hmm? Um, and which do you think were good deals? Uh, I think there there were some strong sales on rare books. Um, you know, kind of unique high-grade variants. Um, and some solid sales on some grails. I think if we look at the grails, we might be see a little bit of uh, leveling off in the prices, which is, I think is what we're seeing in the, um, the market as a whole. So that is it for this video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for stopping by. In the meantime, you can take a look at a couple of my other videos here. And wait a minute. Wait, which way? A couple of my other videos here, right? Yeah, a couple of my other videos here. And this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.